I was bitten by a tick in the one morning and got up out of bed and a tick had gotten on me in the night. I walked to put the coffee on. By the time I come back, my head was just like a balloon. Mum of two, Janelle Williams, is understandably emotional. Three years ago, she came frighteningly close to dying. I couldn't see and my throat and everything started closing up. And um... at the time, Janelle didn't know what was happening, but her body was going into anaphylactic shock. She would developed an allergy to meat and dairy, triggered by the tick bite. Stephen took me straight to the doctors, not realising exactly how serious it was, and walking in the doctors, and the doctor said I had basically two minutes to live. A shot of adrenaline saved her life, but it was a moment that would also change her life. We don't have any dairy products in the house. Remy can actually eat dairy products, but I can't, and I'm super allergic, and I find that if it's in the house, a little bit spills, or it gets on a chopping board, any cheese or yogurt or milk, then, um, then I get quite ill. So we have chosen as a family not to have that in the house. Even though the whole family have been bitten by ticks, it was only Janelle and her 11-year-old daughter, Remy, who were left with severe life-threatening allergies. When I get an allergic reaction, um, I get really bad headaches, I get very tired, um, I can vomit, I just overall don't feel very well at all. I don't like watching it either. I haven't watched it at all. When we discovered that things were sort of going wrong with our health, um, we learned about this allergy to red to ticks and which made us allergic to red meat and mammals. There is little known about the red meat tick allergy. It's believed it's caused by sugar in a protein. What we do know is it's not nearly as common as peanut allergies, which are on the rise. My feet get itchy. Then my tongue gets itchy, then my throat gets itchy. Bradford Binky's peanut and dairy allergies are so severe, the tiniest trace can trigger a deadly reaction. He's only six, but he's already had three anaphylactic attacks. An EpiPen carried by his mother, Leone Giddy, saved his life. You go to hospital and they tell you how to, what to do when it happens, but when it's actually happening, you, you're going, it's, you know, it's happening and it's real and you're going to have to save a child's life and it's quite um, traumatic. It really is. Every year, 30,000 children are diagnosed with a food allergy. Boys in particular are more prone to peanut allergies. Figures from the Bureau of Statistics show around 71,000 boys aged 2 to 18 have an allergy or intolerance to peanuts compared to 39,000 girls. Allergies are a huge problem for kids in Australia and it's a growing problem. Professor Brad Frankham is a leading allergy specialist. I don't think it can be explained on environment or on diet because I think there's no reason to think boys would eat peanut butter more than girls would. It just doesn't make sense. So I think we have to look at the genetic basis of that to try and understand it a bit better. Doctors are baffled by the huge increase in food allergies. Until the 1990s, cases were still relatively rare. Now there are waiting lists up to 18 months long just to see a specialist. And still, no one knows exactly what what causes them. It's frustrating because there is no answer and there is no cure. Experts say more research is desperately needed, otherwise Australia could be on the verge of an allergy epidemic. I think with any every allergy you really need to treat it seriously. Get your child to the hospital, to the doctors, find out exactly what's going on. It can, it can end very, very badly.